Tonight, fulfill your promise and get Leah Sharibu and other abducted girls released before you leave office. That's the charge from the Catholic Bishop of Yola, Dami Mamza, to President Muhammad Buhari four years after Leah's abduction. Victims of banditry in Kaduna seek the state government's assistance in rebuilding their homes as they also ask security agents to scale up their operations. It's time to prepare for the elections in July. Governor Buiga Oyitola tells his co-contestants in the Osho APC governorship primary as he clinches his party's ticket for the governorship poll. And Russia's President Vladimir Putin and his ally, Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko, extend military drills in Belarus amid fears that Russia plans to attack Ukraine, which shares a long border with Belarus. Four years after the abduction of 110 girls, including Leah Sharibu in Dapchi, Yobi State, the Catholic Bishop of Yola, Bishop Dami Mamza, is asking President Mohamed Buhari to fulfill his promise of securing the release of Leah and other girls that are still in captivity before the end of his tenure. Bishop Mamza made the call while speaking to journalists in his office in Yola, the Adamawa State capital, on the four years of Leah Sharibu's captivity by Boko Haram insurgents. According to him, the president had declared that he was elected because of the belief that he will be able to tackle the security challenges in the country. Since the abduction of Leah Sharibu by Boko Haram insurgents, alongside over a hundred other schoolgirls in Dapchi, Yobi State, four years ago, many have cried out to the government to secure her release, all to no avail. Although some other abductees have been released, Leah Sharibu has remained in captivity because of claims of her refusal to renounce her Christian faith. The Catholic Bishop of Yola is asking President Muhammadu Buhari to match his words with action by ensuring the release of Leah and that of other abducted girls before the end of his tenure as president. I think from what happened to Leah Sharibu, who can say that Leah represents the image of Christianity, why was she not released? Because simply because she was a Christian. Others were released because they were Muslims. So it is, it, the impression actually is that Christians are under custody in as much as Leah is still under custody because she was held because of her faith and because of her Christianity. Even though it's been four years, Leah's mother remains hopeful that she will one day see her daughter again, especially with assurances from one of the released girls that Leah is indeed alive. One look at she. Nakachiba <laughs> Bishop Dami Mamza, however, has a message for the government as the country marks the fourth year of Leah Sharibu in captivity. My message to the government of Nigeria as we mark the fourth year of uh, Leah in custody is that the government should make every effort to make sure that Leah is released and reunited with her family. And not only Leah, Chuba girls and other girls that are in custody of their abductors, the government should make every effort to make sure that they are released. 
If the government does not do that, before the end of this administration, then we can consider this government to be a failure in terms of security. The bishop is calling on Nigerians not to relent in praying for the release of Leah Sharibu and other abducted girls. In Kaduna State, victims of bandit attacks in Chukun local government era are asking security agencies to beef up security in their communities to enable them to return to their homes. The victims, who are currently taking refuge at an internally displaced persons camp in Guningora in Chukun local government, say they were sacked by the bandits who killed and kidnapped their people and burnt down their houses during several attacks in the last two years. They say they are willing to return to their communities if the government can beef up security and help them rebuild their houses or relocate them to safer communities. In the past three years, many communities in the central senatorial zone of Kaduna State have come under attack by gunmen suspected to be bandits. The attacks have claimed several lives and property, with thousands of people sacked from their homes. Over a thousand households who were displaced from over 50 communities in Chinkun local government area of Kaduna and some others from neighboring Niger state are said to be taking shelter here amidst challenges of medical care, food and sanitary hygiene. The camp coordinator is however asking the government to either rebuild and secure the communities to enable them to go back home or relocate them to safer places. We want to go back to our land. They are our ancestral land. This is where our forefathers are buried. This is where we grew up. And so we want to go back to our land. I want, if, if government can, can, can tackle security, we want to go back. We will go back there. But if, but if not, we want government to relocate us. Let there be a place that we can settle down. Our people are just scattered all over. Some people are forced now to go and rent houses to go and rent houses where they, they don't even have the money to. They are just farmers, peasant farmers. The attacks have disrupted education in the affected communities. These children, who are supposed to be in school, are now taking refuge here with their parents. They have no idea when they will return to the classroom. To cushion the plight of the IDPs, the former Commissioner of Agriculture in Kaduna State has donated some relief materials. The materials include rice and other food items. People require medical support. We understand that there are people that have had to be amputated just because they couldn't afford 2,000, 5,000 naira for medical, uh, as medical, medical bills. There are people who have, who, who suffered fractures. There are people who will require bullets to be extracted from their bodies. So what we did was to set aside 2 million naira as a, as, a, as, a, as a direct medical support. There have been a series of attacks in the northwest part of the country which has seen a rise in mass abductions, killings and other violent crimes since late 2020. As the government struggles to restore law and order, it is imperative that steps are taken to tackle the huge humanitarian crisis being created by the constant attacks. A Nigerian army airstrike aimed at bandits in the southern region of Niger Republic in the Maradi settlement has left seven children dead and many wounded. And that's according to the governor of the Maradi region of the Nigerian border country. Now, the governor further says the victims, 12 in number, are all children. And he says the incident occurred during a social ceremony as he believes that the planes were targeting bandits in the border areas but then missed their target, hitting Nachade instead. The United Nations High Commission for Refugees says the Maradi region is host to some 100,000 Nigerian refugees who have fled attacks from the said group in Nigeria. Still in security, troops of Operation World Stroke have rescued eight persons kidnapped from their farm in Agasha town of Guma local government era on Wednesday, February the 16th this year. The Benue state government, in a statement by the chief press secretary to Governor Samuel Otom, said so the victims had spent over three days with their abductors before their rescue by troops of the OPWS. 
According to the statement, the gallantry of the troops from Operation Wellstroke, who made contact with the kidnappers at Bekyo, led to an exchange of gunfire leading to the rescue of the victims. The statement further says that all the rescued persons have since been reunited with their families. Meanwhile, reprieve has come for 24 victims kidnapped in Gugurawa village of Bungudu local government area as they have been rescued by the Zamfara State Police Command. Addressing journalists in the state capital, the command spokesperson, SP Mohamed Shehu, said the victims were rescued following a gun battle between the troops and the terrorists. He adds that one of the victims is currently receiving medical treatment at an undisclosed hospital due to gunshot injuries sustained during the shootout, while all have been reunited with their families. The Commissioner of Police, Ayuba Elkana, commends the resilience of the operatives while assuring members of the public of police continuous commitment to end the lingering security challenges bedeviling the state. Sixty years after the conceptualization of the strategic link bridge connecting Yenegua to Oporoma community, the headquarters of Southern Ijo local government area says the project is finally taking off. While the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, had the honor to flag off the construction of the bridge linking the riverine Oporoma community to other parts of the state. While the event, which took place at Angyama community, was preceded by a historic drive along the Yenegua Oporoma Okubia Road. With workmen and tools deployed to site, it's only a matter of months before a long-time dream becomes a reality because the construction of the bridge linking the River Rhine Oporoma community to other parts of the state has been anticipated for decades. At the flag of exercise, women from the benefiting communities are profuse in their appreciation. A historic project of this magnitude perhaps requires personalities such as the vice president to flag it off, which is why Professor Ashimaju, beautifully dressed in Ijo attire, is here in company of his host, Governor Doye Diri. The state governor describes the flag off of the link bridge as significant to the people of Southern Ijo local government area, given the fact that it has been on the drawing board for 60 years. It has been a very difficult journey taking over the construction of this 36 kilometer stretch of road. About 10 bridges have to be built crisscrossing lakes, rivers, swamps and at an astronomical cost. I can't hear you. Commending ah, Governor Diri for continuing projects that predate his administration, Professor Oshibaja says the 36-kilometer Yenagua Opuruma Ukubie Road is significant as it will improve the local economy. He also notes that the partnership between the federal and state government is working. This is a partnership with the federal government of Nigeria. And President Mohamed Buhari, in his typical open-mindedness, has done what previous administrations have not done. And, I, and I'm so happy and thankful that Governor Diri pointed this out. And that is refunding what had been spent by the states on this road. Refund, making sure that what has been spent is refunded. That is the true spirit of partnership. The flag of ceremony is part of activities marking the second anniversary of the Doye Diri led administration in the state. In part two after the break, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NDLEA, intercepts counterfeit cash of $4.7 million in the nation's capital. Join us again. Welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channels Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. 
Fulfill your promise and get Leah Sharibu and other abducted girls released before you leave office. That's the charge from the Catholic Bishop of Yola, Dami Mamza, to President Muhammad Buhari four years after Leah's abduction. Victims of banditry in Kaduna seek the state government's assistance in rebuilding their homes as they also ask security agents to scale up their operations. It's time to prepare for the elections in July. Governor Buigo Yatola tells his co-contestants in the Osho ABC governorship primary as he clinches his, party, his party's ticket for the governorship poll. And Russia's President Vladimir Putin and his ally, Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko, extend military drills in Belarus amid fears that Russia plans to attack Ukraine, which shares a long border with Belarus. Governor Buigo Yatala will be flying his party's flag again in the Oshun State Governorship election billed for July the 16th this year, following his victory at the party's governorship primary. Governor Yatala polled 222,169 votes in the primary, which was supervised by the Kwara State Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak. After what can be described as a long night at the APC Secretariat in Oshubo, the Oshun State capital, the waiting is now over for journalists, party agents and other stakeholders as the head of the Oshun APC primary, Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, with the returning officers, give the results of the exercise. Four six zero. Four six zero. Four six zero. Adioti Mashud Ola Leka one two nine two one. One two nine two one. Governor Oyotola says this is not a winner takes all, as he calls on his co contestants to put the election behind them and join him to work for the advancement of the party and progress of the state. With this primary election night concluded, I invite us all to rededicate ourselves and the party to deliver an overwhelming victory on the gubernatorial post holding on Saturday, 16 July 2022. For me, we are all winners. I therefore extend my hand of fellowship to the other aspirants to join me as we prepare for the July election. We are brothers. Let us join hands to, to be the ocean of our dream. Considering the acrimonies before and during the primary, many would be watching to see if the APC in Oshun State can indeed put its house in order before the governorship election in July. From Oshun, let's head to Rivers, where State Governor Yesam Wiki has berated his cross river state counterpart, Professor Ben Ayade, for attempting to use the police to thwart the People's Democratic Party's rally in Calabar on Saturday. Governor Wike, who was speaking in Calabar, the Crossover State capital, says it's unfortunate that the police barricaded the Calabar Sports Club, the venue for the flag off of the PDP's campaign for Ogoja Yala Federal Constituency and Kwabuyu State Constituency by elections. Do not be afraid. They tried it in River State. We resisted them. So they are trying to instigate fear in you. Don't be afraid at all at all. Whatever private government can do, PDP can do it better. I don't understand how a governor will ordinary federal constituency election, ordinary state election, and you are stopping them from holding rally. When it comes to governors, what will happen? I thought, I thought, I thought, as a governor with very high budget, I thought the only way to test whether you have done well for our people is to allow them to hold the rally and see where our people will go. When people don't go, you know that I'm true. My people are with me. But now that people have come, they should give you that, my brother, things are not well. What is it? Things are not uh, well. 
governor of Edo State, Godwin Obasaki, and his Jigawa State counterpart, Mohamed Baldaru, have been speaking on ways to boost the agriculture sector, which they believe is the main alternative to crude oil as a major revenue earner in Nigeria. The governors were speaking in Benin City when Governor Obasaki played host to Governor Baduru. Uh, governor Baduru, who is the chairman of the Presidential Fertilizer Initiative, insisted that enough fertilizers are in stock, but then the supply chain to farmers has been the problem, a view also shared by his host. Uh, fertilizer has been available uh, the last two years and is still available now. I know blending plants that have stock and they could not sell. So, but uh, probably in the villages, sometimes if there are no proper distribution, it's uh, really difficult. More especially the presidential fertilizer initiative, the margin for the distributors is small so that we can sell to the farmers at cheap price. So distributors don't want to seriously distribute uh, but uh, i believe uh, there is fertilizer and we are working uh, uh, very hard to to make fertilizer available for the next uh, season for this coming season oh definitely um as um chairman of the next committee on the diversification of the economy he's worked very hard and we have had opportunities to work closely um with the issue of fertilizer you know the alchi fertilizer plant is a compounded fertilizer blending facility. We have stock, um, so what he said is true. Um, because of high cost of transportation and the peg margins, sometimes people are not, uh, distributors are not excited taking these uh, fertilizers <coughs> at the prices they've given them to the interiors. Uh, but having said that, <coughs> um, it's, it takes a while to diversify an economy. Uh, but he's one of those governors I know has that wheel and he speaks up uh, every time in our meetings on the need for us to begin to seriously move our economy away from its dependency on crude oil. And except we do that, things will be really tough for us. Still in agriculture, the Kogi State government says it will continue to invest massively in that sector in order to diversify the state's economy by enhancing food production and ensuring food security for the state and the country as a whole. The Deputy Governor of the state, Mr. Edward Onoja, stated this during the commissioning of a rice processing mill established by the federal government and the World Bank Support Value Chain Development Program at Kungbani Community in Lokoja, local government area of Kogi State. Activities for the Technical Implementation Support Visit to Value Chain Development Projects of the Federal Government embarked upon in Kogi State begins with the visit of Fatima Buhari, who is the National Marketing Advisor. She is accompanied by the State Deputy Governor, Edward Onoja, and some top government functionaries who were in Kugbani Community, Lokoja local government area of the state. The people troop out in colorful attires to welcome her and the rest of the team while showcasing their produce in appreciation to the federal government. The coordinator IFAD VCDP in Kogi State explains that they've made great impact in the lives of farmers in the state by improving their yield and productivity. They state that the counterpart fund for two years is ready to be paid at any moment. We are building their capacity in a manner that with or without VCDP, they'll be able to reach out to the market, readily available markets, to be able to sell off their products and to help to improve on their living standard. The governor decided that we should pay for two years so that it will help the program and also help our people. Commissioning the rice processing mills built for the farmers, the state deputy governor, Edward Onoja, commends the federal government for partnering with the state government in empowering the rural farmers to generate more income than ever before. We'll continue to add more numbers to our farmers through the various projects and programs. We have about four going on concurrently. And we'll continue to add more numbers to farmers as young people and women get attracted to the value they see in those that are already engaged in it. While expressing satisfaction with the performance of the state government towards the projects, the daughter to President Muhammadu Buhari, Fatima Buhari, who doubles as a national marketing advisor for the value chain development projects, charged Nigerians to invest in agriculture.
The problem we have is not us farming, doing our processing and making production by ourselves. The problem we have is we have this mentality of foreign products in our minds and we have to remove that from our minds. This interaction with the farmers in Kogi State is raising hopes among the farmers that there will be beneficiaries of more interventions from the federal government. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SEREP, has asked the 36 state governors to redirect public funds which will allow less privileged children enjoy access to quality basic education in every state. SEREP claims that several of the 36 states have failed to pay the counterpart fund to access a 51 billion naira matching grant earmarked by the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, for basic education in the country as of July 2019. The rights group say that state governors are clearly in the best position to invest more toward the right to quality education for poor children within their states. Sarap also notes that the persistent failure to pay counterpart funds has hugely contributed to denying poor Nigerian children access to quality basic education opportunities and development. Operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NDLEA, have stopped an attempt by a syndicate to inject fake $4.7 million cash into the economy. According to the NDLEA, its officials had on Friday intercepted a consignment sent from Lagos to Abaji area of the Federal Capital Territory, which led to the arrest of a 52-year-old suspect who will be handed over to officials of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for further investigation. The NDLEA also claims that a nursing mother who had been arrested in January and granted bail has been rearrested over possession of assorted drugs like tramadol, swinol, diazepam and pentazokine injection ampules in offer area of Kwara State. In the same vein, the agency officers, that's the NDLEA officers, have arrested two drug dealers in Adamawa State with 239 blocks of cannabis sativa weighing 209 kilograms as officials arrested and seized a truck conveying 164.8 kilograms of cannabis sativa concealed in pig milk cartons from Lagos to Maiduguri at Azari Bauchi. Well, the absence of critical inspection agencies at Nigeria Sports means that the possibility of substandard products like the adulterated fuel currently causing supply disruptions, making it through to the market, is high. That's the view of the Director General of the Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, Madam Farouk Salim. Madam Salim told Channel's Television's Ladia Akere Dilale on our current affairs program, Newsnight, that though there are well-established standards for quality and composition of imported fuel, Capacity to test such products for compliance is currently lacking at the nation's entry points. We have the ability to check those products in Nigeria. In our Oba complex, we have a lab that can do that easily. So we are trying to work on a collaboration now with the DPR where we will be able to help them if the products are already in Nigeria, they can bring it to us within a few minutes we can tell them what the contents are. But the standards are already set. All those adulterated uh, items like methanol and all that are clearly stated in the standards. Also, if we happen to be at the ports when these products are coming in, we could easily say, okay, hold on, wait a minute. This tanker bringing this oil, we're gonna take a sample, we'll take it to our lab, check it, and then alert DPR and say, hey, this product is below standard. We are not at the port, so we don't have the ability, even if we are allowed to do it, to go into the ports and check these items. For the full interview with Madam Farouk Salim, do watch Newsnight. That's tomorrow, Monday, February the 21st at 9 p.m. right here on Channels Television. Still ahead on the news at 10, Chief Justice of Nigeria, Tanko Mohammed, says the judiciary is open to initiatives aimed at strengthening the capacity of judicial workers. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, says the judiciary is open to initiatives aimed at improving and strengthening the capacity of judicial officers in handling cases on emerging crimes trends in the country. Now, the CGN expressed these thoughts during a visit by a delegation of U.S. officials led by the ambassador to Nigeria, Ms. Mary Beth Leonard, over the weekend. According to a press release from the spokesman to the CJN, 
Some of those emerging crimes include cybercrime, cross-jurisdictional infringement of intellectual property rights, and espionage. The CGN adds that judges in the country require training on block technology and online dispute resolution as it affects e-commerce, which is becoming a challenge due to inadequate awareness of the technology and technical abilities and capacity. According to the U.S. Ambassador, the visit is an opportunity to encourage the Nigerian judiciary to continue collaborating with the United States mission, including in raising the profile of intellectual property protection, which is essential for Nigeria's development and international partnerships. Ms. Leonard also hinted that the U.S. was exploring how best to support Nigeria's judicial processes during the 2023 general elections. The government's efforts to deliver quality health care services for kidney patients got a huge boost as His Love Foundation, which is the charity arm of the redeemed Christian Church of God, donates a two fully equipped dialysis centers at the Wuse General Hospital Abuja and the Tafabalewa University Teaching Hospital in Bochi State. A total of 11 state-of-the-art dialysis machines, two medical water reverse osmosis purification systems, and two 30 kVA generators are among the latest donations by the church. Officials of the church say the foundation has in the last three years spent over 25 billion naira on various social interventions. Senior pastors of the redeemed Christian Church of God and government officials gather as the Enoch and Folu Adeboe Dialysis Center is commissioned at the Wuse District Hospital. May the Lord bless you. It is part of activities to mark the 80th birthday of the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboe. The center is equipped with a 30 kVA generator a medical water purification system, and eight dialysis machines. Speaking at the official handing over ceremony, officials of the church highlight the need to preach and show love by action. For us at the Redeemed Church of God, Christian Social Responsibility, CSR, is compelling. We have to do it. It is love in action. The Redeemed Christian Church of God have decided that just preaching the gospel is not enough. We also need to show um, a physical evidence for what the gospel has to offer. A similar donation is made at the Abubakar Tafa Apalewa University Teaching Hospital, Bochi, bringing the total number of dialysis machines in the two centers to 11. This is the time in the history of our nation and humanity that we must all come together. By the special grace of God, we believe that this dialysis center will restore health to people's lives. So far, His Love Foundation has donated 37 dialysis machines across the country. While the donations of this life-saving equipment is critical, the responsibility of care is placed on the hospital management. While saluting the bold step of the Redeemed Church and the General Basia, we please call for the constant maintenance and required maintenance of these facilities provided. According to the Ministry of Health, there are about 25 million people with various degrees of kidney diseases in Nigeria. The donation of these dialysis centers will no doubt bring some relief to kidney patients who struggle daily to access care. To some entertainment news now, First Bank is returning as one of the sponsors of music talent Hans reality television show of The Voice Nigeria. The global music franchise, which is making a return for a fourth season, will be fully produced in Nigeria and has called for entries via the website thevoicenigeria.com. A new cycle begins for famous musical talent on reality television show The Voice Nigeria as organizers and sponsors meet a cross-section of Nigerian media for the fourth installment. Having pushed down the last season over many COVID-19 induced constraints, the show returns with giant sponsors, First Bank and others. More importantly, the music and entertainment industry in Nigeria has given hope to young Nigerians that they can achieve what they dream. While details about celebrity coaches and prize money are still embargoed, 
Returning sponsors, First Bank Nigeria PLC, are extremely proud of their contributions to a platform that helps grow the Nigerian creative industry. We're seeing amazing talent also come out from many of these different industries as well. So who better to support them than certainly us? We're very, very much interested in these various industries and we will continue to do our best to support them, to pull them up, to give them the stage to not only be able to express themselves but also for others, others to be able to know them, appreciate them and definitely come out and support them as well. The portal for online submission of entries opened on Friday via thevoicenigeria.com. Executive producer Aki Salami promises so much more this new season. This is the biggest music show globally in the world and we have it in Nigeria. We're producing it in Nigeria. Last season, 15,421 people. How do we know that this, is, um, uh, this will be bigger? Last season we were constricted for time. This season we have all the time to bring people on board and process them properly. The last season winner, Esther, was only singing in a church choir a year before jumping on the show. Now from being on the platform, she stands as a music celebrity with many fans across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, with a warm welcome, help me celebrate Esther! Such a platform avails people like us the opportunity to impact the world with our gifts. The, the, for the past one year, it's been an amazing journey. You know, musically wise, I've improved. You know, um, I get to reach out to more people because when they, they see me, I, I saw the voice, you know. Other partners for The Voice Nigeria 2022 include Airtel and Jack Motors. With this, the call for entry begins as many music hopefuls are encouraged to audition. Now to the arts, I Wear Myself is a solo exhibition and performance by contemporary artist Jacqueline Shuari in Lagos. This artist has been taking a large size portrait painting and installations around the country, beginning from the nation's capital. This touring exhibition of her large sized images has found its way from the nation's capital to the commercial city of Lagos. The theme is unchanged as artist Jacqueline Sowari is revealing her paintings, installations and performance art at the African Artist Foundation. The reason why I chose the title Now I Myself is because I want people to live their most authentic lives. I believe that in this world we are put here like a puzzle, there's a giant puzzle and if everybody is shaped in a unique way and if we're able to bring what we are created with to the table, the world would be a better place. These installations suspended above the ground still take that formative technique, encouraging people to be true to themselves and not to try to be crowd pleasers. It's more or less like calling every one of us to begin to have a definitive approach to what we do. And in defining it, it shouldn't be what the society defines for you. It should be what you define for yourself, right from your intuition. That is from the inside to the outside. If you look at the various artworks that the artist has done, a lot of them, has, uh, they all have stories behind them. And there are stories that are enough to inspire every one of us. Just like she said, each of these artworks represent one of us, represent each of us. So what do we do? We have to go and find ourselves. We have to start proudly wearing ourselves. The artist has a sit down with art patrons to explain the idea behind the exhibits to a curious audience intrigued by her concept. This particular piece is something that is so powerful to me and inspires me everything because you have to you have to keep moving, irrespective of what comes your way. The highlight of the event is a performance involving the artist, which reveals her versatility and ability to embrace and utilize her many God-given talents. Sometimes the way you need to lose is not on your body. 
A face can tell a story without whispering a single word. We are your victories. We are your battle scars. We are yourself. We are yourself. We are your struggles. We are your dreams. Take pride in who you are. And always remember, there is no courage without fear. Well, the Palace of the Oba of Benin has physically received two bronze artifacts which were looted from the kingdom in the aftermath of the British raids in 1897 from Jesus College at the University of Cambridge and the University of Aberdeen. The bronze cockerel had been at the Jesus College for about 120 years until the return was initiated by the students three years ago. Our correspondent Osaze Obaze reports. A small aircraft bird at the Benin airport. The prized artworks are wheeled into the VIP lounge of the airport with the Nigerian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom and the Director General National Commission for Museums and Monuments visibly excited. This is the Okoko. Uh, 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 At the palace of the Oba, the mood is expectant, ceremonial, as the palace chiefs, traditional rulers, and members of the royal family wait for the bronze cockerel and the Oba's bronze head. And the returned bronzes are here. His Royal Majesty Abba Ewai II, flanked by specially consecrated chiefs and palace handlers, make their way from the king's chambers. We are Tunji. Tunji Ishola, we are glad to. Then the unveiling is executed. So we hand over to the ambassador. Thank you very much. The Nigerian High Commissioner to the UK officially presents the bronzes to the other. To hand over this object to Your Majesty, signaling the return of this artifact. The assignment is very simple: to directly bring this object to Oba of the New Kingdom. That is the presidential directive. The Director General, National Commission for Museums and Monuments, is grateful for all these. Same with the Abba's younger brother. It's a great moment that I'm being part of history. But during my time as the Director General of the National Commission for Museums and Monuments, these artifacts are not only promised to be returned, but physically being returned. I must, at this juncture, express my appreciation to the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The President has taken a keen interest in the handling of our artifacts. The curator of the Benin Museum says about a thousand more Benin bronzes are expected to come from Germany by the middle of this year. Records show that over 10,000 Benin bronzes were looted by the British when they raided Benin in 1897. From the Palace of the Oba of Benin, Osazobaze Channels, Television News. On the international scene, the UK's Buckingham Palace or Buckingham Palace as says the Queen has tested positive for COVID-19. According to a statement, the monarch is experiencing mild cold-like symptoms but expects to continue light duties at Windsor over the coming week. The Queen, who is 95 years old, had been in contact with her eldest son and heir to the home, the Prince of Wales, who tested positive last week. This announcement comes weeks after the Queen became the UK's longest reigning monarch reaching her platinum jubilee of 70 years on February the 6th. 
Russian President Vladimir Putin and his ally Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko have extended military drills which were due to end on Sunday. A statement cites the, quote, deterioration of the situation in East Ukraine as one reason for keeping an estimated 30,000 Russian troops in Belarus. Now, the move now adds to fears that Russia plans an invasion of Ukraine, which shares a long border with Belarus. Beijing has doused its Olympic flame earlier today, closing a Games that will be remembered for the extremes of its anti-COVID-19 measures and outrage over the doping scandal that enveloped 15-year-old Russian skating sensation Kamila Valieva. A Chinese President Xi Jinping was on hand at the closing ceremony, where International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach described the Beijing Games as truly exceptional before declaring them closed. And finally tonight, two kids from the raving ghetto kids TFUG dance group from Uganda, Akram and King set some residents of Lagos Island into a frenzy as the duo made a surprise appearance for a music video shoot in the area. Well, the duo are popular as the lead dancers from the many viral dance videos put out by the group on Instagram, YouTube and on TikTok. This is what a typical Sunday afternoon looks like on the popular Lagos Island. Today, however, the energy is different. A crowd is growing around two young dancers dancing to a song that recently went viral. They are King and Akram, the lead dancers from the raving Uganda freestyle dance group Get Your Kids TFUG. <laughs> The kids got popular in Nigeria recently after a video of them dancing to LT Skills' new song ODG went viral and have captured international attention, having been referenced by Premier League legend John Terry and receiving a Nickelodeon Kids Awards nomination. The kids stomped, danced, jumped in unison and later brought in their signature individual freestyle to the amazement of the crowd. Earlier, they met with Channels Television and explained that their group is a collection of orphans and destitute children who have decided to use music, dance and drama to achieve basic needs. Children in our community needs where to stay, because some of them they stay on the streets suffering and they get diseases. <laughs> Before coming to Lagos, they had both gone to the United States of America and also have pending invitations as their popularity now brings new opportunities. Well, the beautiful talents out of Africa. And the main news again. The Catholic Bishop of Yola, Dami Mamza, today charged President Muhammad Buhari to march words with action by ensuring the release of Leah Sharibu and other abducted girls before he leaves office, four years after Leah's abduction. Victims of banditry in Kaduna are seeking the state government's assistance in rebuilding their homes. They also want security agents to scale up their operations to enable them to return to their homes with confidence. And Governor Guiga Oyitola picks up the ticket to contest in the July 16th governorship election in Oshun State for the APC. That's the news at 10. Many thanks for watching. I'm Ayo Tunde. Balukun from all of us here is good night and stay safe.